Okay, so let's assume that you're in the Australian outback and a crazed man, probably delusional, not enough water, comes to you and says, I need you to add these two vectors. What you want to do is you want to draw your vectors separately first so that you understand which way those vectors are going. And you name them A and B. And then your second plan is to establish a coordinate system. So you need to know which way Y is and which way X is. It usually makes sense to use a coordinate system that's been handed to you, and oftentimes there'll be a nice one for you. They'll give you an X direction or to the right or something like that. The third step will be to resolve each vector separately, to find the components of A and the components of B. At that point, you will have A sub X and A sub Y, and you'll have B sub X and B sub Y. Then, you're going to find a sub x plus b sub x. That will give the total amount, let's say, to the right that vector r is. And r is what we get when we add a plus b. So, <clears throat> as we go to the right, that will be the sum of the a x component and the b x component. Of course, could be negative. And we'll see that in the example. Here is, uh, we'll also want to find r sub y, which is the sum of the two y components, a sub y and b sub y. Fifth step is to draw a picture that shows r sub x and r sub y added as vectors, tip to tail. And then, when you're there, you can find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector, that r vector, which is r sub x plus r sub y that you found in step four. But of course, r vector is also a plus b, which was our plan to get that guy away from you. So for the example, I'll begin with step one, and that is to draw the two vectors separately. Our first vector is what I'll call vector a. Let's see if I can get to a good spot. Vector a is going to be, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of scale we use. So let's just draw vector A over here and name it, we'll name it A, and we'll say that it's 133 meters long. And they tell you an angle away from horizontal, they say that angle is 68.2 degrees. And then vector B, we're supposed to add vector A plus vector B, Vector B goes like this, and it's a little bit shorter at 89.4 meters long. And they measure, ooh, no, they don't measure that off of that same axis. They measure it off of this axis right here. And this angle, they tell you, is 51.4 degrees. Okay, so we're going to go into step two now, and that is to establish a coordinate system. I think it makes sense to choose X and y like this, y and x. This is step two. Step one was simply drawing both of them. And then we'll move into step three. We want to resolve vector A and resolve vector B, which I'll even name for you. Okay, step three can be done over here. Step three. Resolve them. Okay, so I will draw A again. And let's see, we'll try to put it in the same orientation, but it's not critical. This is not a drawing project as some methods to add vectors are. Here's vector A, and we know that off of this direction, we've got 68.2 degrees. And so I'm going to continue going over until, with my dotted line, I'm gonna continue going over until I can go straight up with the dotted line, which will be the Y direction. <clears throat> and we have a triangle and one of the angles is 90. So this gives us a lot of power. We can now use SOHCAHTOA to find the two components of A, we're looking for A sub X and A sub Y. Notice that the X direction goes this way. It's going to the right. And the Y direction is going up. Because if you look at vector A, vector A is going up and to the right. That's the direction that vector A is going. So of course it has components that go to the right and to the up. 
So to find a sub x and a sub y, we're going to want to use SOHCAHTOA. Let's just jot that down over here. This contains three equations in it. And the one that's gonna be useful for the adjacent side is probably gonna be either the tangent or the cosine. Let's take, take cosine in this case. The cosine of that angle there, theta, is equal to the adjacent side's length divided by the hypotenuse's length. So we can say that this, the adjacent side, if we just multiply both sides by hypotenuse, we'll find that a sub x is equal to, in this case, it's going to be the hypotenuse's length times the cosine of our angle. And of course, a sub y is going to be a similar thing. It's going to be the hypotenuse's length times the sine of the angle theta. And then we can calculate those guys very quickly. I have a calculator. Let's do 133 times the cosine. Oh, let's do cosine first. Cosine of 68.2 degrees, we'll hit enter, but check this out. We can just really quickly, I did second entry. I could just really quickly go over here and change that to a sine also. Now I've got both of my answers, and I can put those down right here. A sub x, well that was the one that said cosine, so that's my first answer there. I'm gonna carry along a lot of digits so I don't introduce any rounding errors here. And I'll remember that those are units of meters because those are my units of vector A. And this is 123.4886 meters. Notice, notice that A sub Y is significantly longer than A sub X. Is that consistent with the fact that this angle is greater than 45 degrees? It's something you should always ask yourself. Next up, we'll grab another piece of paper and do vector B. I've got a really nice sketch of vector B right here. I'm going to try to draw it again so that we can resolve it now. Vector B looks like this, a little bit shorter, 89.4 meters long and measured off of what we're calling the y-axis, 51.4 degrees. So again, I'm gonna draw a dotted line vertically until I get to the point where I can go horizontally in the x direction to get to there, make that a right angle, and I wanna find these two sides. So this is vector b, this is vector b sub y, and vector b sub x is right here. What do you notice about vector b sub x? Vector b sub x is very different from vector a sub x. a sub x went that direction. b sub x goes this direction. b goes up and to the left. b sub y goes up, and b sub x then goes to the left. So that must means, mean that it's going to be negative. We'll take some Soka Toa again, and we know that, uh, well, let's see, this is, oh man, this is going to be the hypotenuse times the, let's see, is this adjacent or opposite? Let's go back over to this one. We found that the x component was hypotenuse times cosine, and I don't want you to think that the hypotenuse times the cosine is always the x component. I want you to know that the adjacent side is always the hypotenuse times the cosine. This is the y component, but it's adjacent to the angle, so it's the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. And this is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, but it's negative. Let's make sure we don't forget that at the end. So I'm gonna go in here very quickly again. I'm gonna type in the hypotenuse, 89.4, and I'm gonna multiply by the sine of 51.4. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do second entry, and I'll go over here to the cosine and do the same thing. And now I've got both those numbers. I'm looking at these two numbers, and I'm thinking one of them 
is significantly bigger. If this angle is 51.4 degrees, which of these two sides should be bigger? If it were a 45 degree angle, they would be equal, right? But since it's moved this direction of 45, which one should be bigger? Right, 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 B sub x. So let's put this, the answer here is negative 69.8 six, seven, nine meters. And this answer is going to be 55.7748 meters. We've got a whole bunch of digits because we know we're going to need three digits at the end and we don't want to reduce any, introduce any rounding errors. So we're keeping three extra digits, it seems like. And if we keep three, we're not, three extra, we're not gonna be worrying about the uh, significant figures in any way. <clears throat> so, calculator is going to be in some serious usage pretty soon. We're actually at step five. No, sorry, we're at step four right now. It says find the sum of a sub x and b sub x and find the sum of a sub y and b sub y. So, let's compile our information together at this time. I know that put this guy in the, the view again. A sub x equals 49.3919 meters. A sub y equals 123.4886 meters and b sub x and b sub y can be found right there. So let's add them together. I'm gonna argue that r sub x, which is the x component of the resultant vector, r sub x is equal to, well, it's gonna be a sub x, 49.3919 meters, plus b sub x, but b sub x is a negative number. So I'm gonna do plus, negative 69.8679 meters. And then I write down the same or similar expression for r sub y, which is going to be a sub y, 123.4886 meters, plus we've got a positive b sub y, because b sub y is going upward, plus 55.7748 meters. We'll do those math. Bits. For you. you should check that you'll get the same answer as I do.